and welcome to Finish Your Business. In our podcast, we leave no business unfinished. I am your host Namrata Sethi and I am also the marketing coordinator for the project MEGE. MEGE is a joint project with Haga Helia University of Applied Sciences, Helsinki Business College, Alto University and The Shortcut and is funded by Udeman Lito. It is focused on promoting entrepreneurship with international talent. And today in our show, we are joined with a very special guest, Mikko Yarvinen, who is also the project manager for MEGE. Welcome to the show, Mikko. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. Please, could you introduce yourselves? Yes, sure. So uh, um, I'm a project manager with uh, Haga Helia Startup School. And uh, in addition to that, I'm an entrepreneur myself. Um, my background is in uh, small businesses. Uh, in my life, I have uh, started a business uh, four times in my life. And uh, every single time, there has been a recession in six months. So uh, my deepest apologies for whatever you have gone through in 2020, uh, 2020 this year. And uh, yeah, that's a bit, bit probably about me. So you did start a new business this year? I did, yes. I did that in, in, in earlier this year. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it has been a fairly good indicator for, <laughs> for whatever happens in the economy <laughs> next. So you mentioned you're working with Startup School. Could you tell us more about it? Yes, happy to do that. So um, um, Haga Helia Startup School is a university-linked business incubator. And uh, we are located with uh, Haga Helia University of Applied Science, which is, I believe, the uh, largest uh, business educator in Finland, one of the largest, largest in the Northern Europe. And... Uh, um, Essentially, what uh, Haga Helia Startup School does is uh, we support uh, mainly our degree program students on combining their studies and uh, uh, developing uh, any new business ideas into actual ventures. Uh, but in addition to that, we also uh, work with the uh, individuals who are coming outside of the university, uh, supporting some individuals through our uh, uh, continuous learning or lifelong learning uh, services. And uh, we're also involved in quite a few different development projects, uh, uh, including uh, some education export initiatives for uh, developing countries. But can entrepreneurship be taught in a university? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a good question. And I think there's, it's uh, kind of like an ongoing concern and ongoing discussion. Uh, if it can or cannot. Um, I will start with a bit of a personal view. So uh, the uh, how I actually ended up in, in Haga Helia Startup School was uh, kind of like uh, having my experience as an entrepreneur and then having the opportunity of uh, stepping out on from a software company we were, we were working with. And uh, my initial thought was to come to Haga Helia Startup School to kind of like uh, learn if I have learned something that would be useful for the student entrepreneurs. And then what I learned in two or three years is that learning doesn't really work that way. So it's not about me kind of like accumulating this huge body of knowledge and then disseminating it to these kind of like uh, students who don't know anything about anything. So that, that's not how learning works. It's uh, it's more of a, I would see as a process of kind of like um, uh, even co-creating knowledge, bringing individuals together, uh, sharing knowledge between individuals and also kind of like building on their own past, what they've learned previously. So very much different process. And um, yeah, that's the probably the kind of like a personal view on this. But uh, uh, in addition, it's good to understand how the uh, training actually works, how the education actually works in, in, in startup school. So we don't do lectures. We don't do textbooks. So it's not kind of like this traditional way of thinking how university should should work. Uh, it's more about experiential learning. So it's about actually the students coming in with their own ideas, us supporting them to develop and uh, sending the students out to get the kind of like validation feedback on their ideas and maybe helping them to go by uh, basically providing some useful tools, some useful frameworks, which kind of like help them to actually develop the business idea and uh, and the business model. And um, I guess some of the examples 
that we do is uh, we do quite a lot of coaching and uh, coaching is actually fairly strict methodology. There's a quite strict role for the coach and the coachee. And uh, it's basically how the uh, aspiring entrepreneur, how, how that collaboration works is that uh, together with the coach, you set up your goals for, let's say, next three months, six months. And then basically the coach is there to kind of like uh, um, help you on kind of building your ideas, how you're actually reaching those goals, how you are actually proceeding on those. Uh, are there maybe some alternatives that you haven't been looking into? It's not about the coach actually giving advice, but it's a process of kind of like uh, helping the coachee or the aspiring entrepreneur in this case to kind of like uh, um, have different thoughts and uh, direct the thinking of, of, the, uh, of the aspiring entrepreneur. Yeah, like how we have like Mentors Day within Mege and uh, I have been interacting with so many participants and I've always got so much positive feedback from them that, you know, thank you for letting us know about this uh, because they get a chance to have this one-on-one -on -one talk with the mentors and kind of get an overview of the business idea from mentors from a different perspective. So whether it's finance, whether it's marketing, it's always like, you know, oh, I never thought about this when you're coming up with your business idea and when you're talking uh, with the mentor and they're like, have you thought about these things? And, you know, it's like a one-on-one, -on -one, which I think is uh, very important and it's amazing that uh, they have this kind of support at the very initial stage of their idea. Yeah, I think that that has been a very useful concept and we'll be getting a lot of good feedback on that. And uh, I think some of the uh, um, teams and uh, some of the early stage ventures we have been working with have actually taken quite a lot of advan advantage of these uh, mentors, be them more formal or less formal, but just kind of like interacting a lot with uh, people who have experience on different fields and uh, learning from there. And uh, I think I'm I'm pretty happy of the uh, mentor day concept that we kind of like developed with for this one. So uh, uh, the basic idea there is actually to uh, uh, time box it into a one day and uh, giving the opportunity for an aspiring entrepreneur to talk with five more experienced entrepreneurs during that one day. And uh, we're not kind of like um, what the aspiring entrepreneurs do. They, of course, they uh, develop some uh, material beforehand so that it's more easier for the mentors to actually grasp the idea and uh, be a bit more productive. But then what happens inside the discussion, it's, it's basically up to the uh, mentor and mentee uh, what the outcome of that can be. And uh, there have been very different outcomes. So uh, I like to say that an uh, uh, aspiring entrepreneur, entrepreneur, a mentee, might kind of like come into that day with uh, just one kind of like big question that uh, he or she is looking to get answered. And uh, what happens during the mentor day is that uh, you might end up with five completely different answers to that question, or you might end up with five un new questions that you need to kind of like start start finding answers and uh i think that's that's how it works in the end in the end of the day you're kind of like uh, as an early stage entrepreneur you're just working with so much uh, ambiguity uh so much uncertainty so um uh, basically this process of uh, interacting with people uh developing your plans based on that uh adjusting what you're actually doing and uh securing also the resources to kind of like move forward that's really iterative process and uh, you just need to kind of like uh, rinse and repeat to kind of like uh, get through that one. Yeah. And since we are talking about uh, the Mege events and Mege is about uh, promoting uh, entrepreneurship with international talent. So why do you think it is very important over here in Finland? Yes, that's a good one. So I think there's uh, two parts of that question. So on the other hand, what makes entrepreneur itself uh, valuable? for, for, for uh, let's say, Helsinki, Finland, or societies in general, and then this aspect of international talent. So um, maybe my background, I'm uh, basically, uh, uh, I'm born into an entrepreneurial family. My uh, father was in construction business, uh, running his company when I was young. And uh, that kind of like uh, gives you maybe uh, one perspective of how to, how to look at the world and how to value the kind of like uh, entrepreneurial approach. Um, if you look at the kind of Finnish economy since 
year 2000 and you look at the kind of like job creation by size of companies, you quite soon understand that the uh, job creation by large companies, companies in the last 20 years has been negative in this country. So the large companies have been really good in destroying jobs in this country. And the uh, new jobs are generated on small and medium businesses. Uh, you have sole, uh, uh, sole proprietorship, sole entrepreneurs that are growing, but you also have these small businesses that are actually creating the uh, jobs. So uh, the whole kind of like small business uh, segment is pretty much the backbone of the uh, economy here. So that's one one reason what makes it makes it important. And uh, then there's also the kind of like uh, process of innovation, if you will. So to me, entrepreneurship and innovation are pretty much similar kind of processes. So it's about essentially identifying opportunities and uh, exploiting those opportunities, uh, creating something new that doesn't exist, which might return, which might uh, become uh, new products, new services that are for the benefit of all. Uh, well, for the benefit of the entrepreneur himself, hopefully, <laughs> and also for the uh, customers that they have. So essentially a uh, process of actually uh, developing uh, continuously in the society. So maybe that's a bit on the part of the uh, how I see entrepreneurship and why it's important. And then there is the uh, as aspect of international talent that we've been addressing in, in this mega. And... Um, I mean, we know that uh, Finland is uh, what we are. We're probably this number two or number three in the aging populations. Um, in addition to that, actually one third of entrepreneurs in Finland are retiring in next ten years. So um, the entrepreneurs are actually aging much more faster than uh, rest of the uh, population here in Finland. And uh, with that kind of like demographics, you pretty much don't have any other option to tend to kind of like attract talent from outside of our borders. And uh, I think Finland has been doing fairly well in attracting that talent. We could do better, but I think where we still lack is retaining that talent. So making sure that these guys are actually uh, establishing here after, let's say, graduating on school or after they kind of like first, first uh, employment here. And uh, yeah, I think that it's just a huge, huge opportunity. It's uh, as we know, Finland is uh, basically an open economy in a global market, and uh, in that kind of environment, you just need to tap to the best talent you can get globally, and then just make it work. And uh, like in one of the aspects in the mega is also like acquiring businesses. Yes. And uh, you did mention that one third of uh, the Finnish entrepreneurs are retiring. So how easy it is to acquire business? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is it easy or not? Um, cannot really say. What I do know is that uh, I think currently uh, there is some uh, 3,000 or 4,000 uh, business transfers happening in this country every year. Uh, that has been developing quite quite quickly recently. Uh, I think one of the key drivers being the demo demographics that are there. Um, if you think of the opportunities, as I said before, uh, one third of the uh, Finnish entrepreneurs are kind of like closing to retirement age. And uh, there's, there was, I remember reading a study that around half of them have some plan of succession in place. So maybe they have uh, 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 sons and daughters who are mm -hmm. taking over the business, or maybe they are thinking of selling the business to uh, some other entity. Uh, but that leaves basically half of the businesses uh, not having any succession plan in place. And uh, if you combine that with the uh, one third of all entrepreneurs, um, Retiring soon, half of that one third having no succession plan. That means that if I would today start calling businesses at random, every sixth would likely to be interested in discussing with me of uh, selling that business or mm -hmm. transferring that business. And uh, on the other hand, um, I think we're going to cover it uh, uh, probably later later in the discussions, but. Uh, uh, there are also a lot of opportunities to fund those kind of like acquisitions available. So uh, opportunities are there, 
funding can be there. So starting point should be fairly good. And uh, maybe one thing worth of mentioning for pros of buying a business is that uh, you're actually buying existing customer base. You're buying existing products and services. You're buying existing cash flows. You already have employees. So if you compare that to the kind of like startup path where you start with zero customers, zero sales, no product, no services, and uh, no employees. So the kind of like risk that you're actually actually taking might be, uh, the risk profile might be quite different with that journey. Yeah, that's true. And uh, coming back to startup school, uh, I wanted to ask like, uh, who is startup school for? Like, you know, is it only for like students or anybody can reach out to startup school? That's a good question. So uh, how Hagahelia Startup School works is that uh, in the history we were preliminary for the degree program students. But uh, in the recent years, we have uh, been opening up much for the uh, larger audience. And uh, with that, we do that do through the uh, open university programs we have, but also through projects like uh, MEGE. We have a number of other projects currently going, like uh, Dynamo, which we are doing together with uh, uh, Nyko Suomen Yrittäjät. Uh, Chamber of Commerce. And uh, these are kind of like, with these instruments, we are able to kind of like uh, open up the services to uh, quite wider population. And um, I think that's really great opportunity, not only for Hagahelia Startup School, but also for the uh, people participating this these programs. So if we're kind of like uh, uh, looking at uh, studies of the kind of like profile of uh, successful entrepreneurs. I think the kind of like uh, most successful age cohort uh, for startup founders is something around 40s, so kind of like mid-career individuals. And uh, you don't get those mid-career individuals usually from the degree programs. So those guys have kind of like a bit more experience and uh, have maybe actually really learned some industry well and kind of like seeing those problems that other people don't. And uh, well, that's basically a starting point for entrepreneurship. You identify an opportunity which that many other individuals haven't been able to identify. So I think that's that's fairly uh, interesting path to take. And uh, that is definitely something we are developing also further as we go with startup school. So uh, I think the whole kind of like uh, higher education is moving towards this uh, idea of continuous learning and uh, continuous uh, lifelong learning, if you will. And what kind of other projects are you doing along with Startup School? Like, uh, Yeah, so uh, some of these projects are actually, as said, targeted for uh, lifelong learners, thinking of starting their business. Mega, Dynamo are good examples. Uh, we do have some projects that are more maybe steered towards uh, research. Um, and then one last kind of like, uh, um, how would I say, a group of projects or type of projects are education mm -hmm. export oriented. And those are actually very interesting bits and pieces also. So uh, uh, Startup School has been uh, helping universities in, uh, for example, Ukraine, uh, South Africa, uh, Botswana on uh, setting up uh, their own university linked business incubators and uh, it can be quite hands-on work uh, setting up the concept setting up the uh, structures uh, supporting on team rosters and this kind of like really practical work and uh, we've also what we've done is uh, uh, this uh, competence building activities also so basically training the trainers in some of these uh, developing countries and uh, I think there's some of the kind of like strong points that we as Hagahelia can leverage is our, uh, our uh, um, uh, teacher education that we are quite well known, known with and combining that with some of the kind of like uh, methodologies uh, and tools in the startup school can be a quite strong package for setting up these uh, university linked business incubator activities. 
Yeah, when I like moved here, I feel like one of the best things which I really like is like hands-on learning where, you mm -hmm. know, because like how we discussed earlier that entrepreneurship uh, in your university, this is more uh, hands-on learning and it's not something like, you know, more of a theory, yep. which uh, I uh, I feel like, you know, when I was uh, I from college, when I went to the job, there were so many things that I did not know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, they do not teach us. It's only theory. Yeah. And it's only when you go to the real world, you come up with it. So that is something which I've seen is really amazing that, you know, you kind of uh, have the support even when you're a student to tell you out like, you know, what is actually required when you are venturing to the world outside where you need these skills. And uh, often uh, I have uh, seen when Startup School says that you need to have an entrepreneurial attitude. Could you tell us more about what do you mean by entrepreneurial attitude? Entrepreneurial, that, that's a good question also. So, uh, um, yeah, I think the kind of like idea of um, why we are talk, discussing also about entrepreneurial attitude is, I think it stems from the uh, uh, fact that uh, uh, Entrepreneurship doesn't happen only in small businesses. So essentially, the uh, entrepreneurial behavior, the entrepreneurial thinking, uh, leadership, the ways of actually uh, developing things are, can be really well used also in a larger business context in corporations, uh, starting from business development, starting from different kind of uh, development activities. And... Uh, from that perspective, I think what we want to tell our degree program students that you need a bit of that entrepreneurial attitude in you, uh, no matter where you're actually actually going after after graduating, and um, except for certain exceptions, maybe. But uh, in most cases, this this fits quite nicely. And uh, I I don't know what what we mean by the entrepreneurial attitude. It's uh, I mean you have things like curiosity, you have a uh, um, basically uh, things a bit close to this kind of like concept of growth mindset uh, so you're basically open to opportunities open open to observing opportunities outside of you and uh, curious on actually proceeding pursuing those opportunities that you're identifying uh, there's quite a I think there's a big list of different meta skills that are kind of like associated also with this uh, this uh, entrepreneurship entrepreneurial attitudes and uh, entrepreneurial thinking. Yeah, that's great. And when can when does sh uh, should an entrepreneur reach out to startup school? Yes, so um, uh, startup school works with very early stage teams and ideas. So um, with the, some of the degree program students, it's uh, we can start off with the individual who has just come up with an idea yesterday and uh, wants to approach us that hey. This is something I've been thinking. What should I do next? So we're kind of like uh, in terms of the uh, ideas or the ventures, we are uh, in a very early stage, idea stage. Uh, I think majority of the uh, teams, individuals we're working with haven't yet incorporated their businesses. So there are, there are literally teams, not companies yet at this stage. And um, I think in that stage, it's basically it's just clear to kind of like, uh, or the most important is to kind of like, uh, yeah, learn more of the problem that you're serving, solving, uh, develop alternative solutions for that and uh, kind of like uh, putting together a bit of a business model that would make sense sense in actually solving that, solving that problem uh, in a profitable way. Um, but yeah. I would say that in very early stages, we welcome teams and individuals to look into this. And how can they reach out to you? Yes. So uh, uh, the main contact point is our website, uh, startupschool.fi. So that is uh, that is where you can learn about the uh, course offering we have, the different programs that are actually starting, and you get the kind of like contact information of uh, of our guys. So so you can move forward from there. And uh, also, uh, we're quite active in in your favorite social media channels. So, uh, so uh, Hagahelia Startup School. If you look at that up, uh, that's one way to kind of like uh, uh, keep on tune on on what are the kind of like new initiatives coming up. So they can follow the Startup School uh, social media for all the activities. Exactly. That's where we try to kind of uh, promote this and push this out. 
That's great. And if you have to give any advice to an entrepreneur uh, in five words, what would that be? Yes. So uh have to do a fairly uh, lengthy exercise to get it in five words. But uh, I think my five words would be uh, love the problem, not solution. That's five. Close to five. <laughs> 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 anyway, so I think it's uh that's probably the kind of like key when you're kind of like in super early stages and uh, uh, thinking if this makes sense or not. Uh, when you see an opportunity, an entrepreneurial opportunity, what you see is a problem that can or cannot be solved. Uh, it can be a problem that can be solved uh, by through an entrepreneurial process or it may not be solvable. And uh, even if you can solve that problem as an entrepreneur, there's a number of solutions that are there, possibilities that you can actually employ. And uh, in a sense, your job is to kind of like uh, use whatever means to kind of identify the uh, best solution for that one. You have tools like uh, customer development process. You have the uh, lean startup process that are kind of like geared to that kind of work. Basically, reducing the ambiguity, uh, reducing the uncertainty on how your solution and uh, how your problem are meeting. So I think that is the kind of like uh, key advice. Um, yeah, I have to give an example of my uh, my own entrepreneurial career. So the uh, um, uh, previous startup that I was inv involved with uh, started with a beautiful idea of uh, solving uh, loneliness of elderly population. Uh, by using some of the techniques known in social media tools. So this was 2012 dated. And um, we actually ended up with a solution that had a good, proper, good chances of solving that loneliness issue. We had users who actually loved the uh, solutions. It was based on uh, uh, two-way video communication, super easy to use, so you don't need any, any technical skills. Uh, even a grandmom can use it. Wow. Okay. <laughs> or, or that was the <laughs> requirement okay. for that. Yeah. And we ended up with users who logged in something like uh, 22 hours of video calls in uh, one day. Wow. So only only two hours downtime of that. <laughs> and uh, guys were doing, two gentlemen, but they were doing this kind of like uh, constantly. And then we had to kind of like look into it. Is there something wrong with the logs or what is happening here? But uh, it was true. These guys had the kind of like connection open basically all the time. And uh, the reason for that was that just basically that the uh, um, these guys were neighbors. They were childhood friends. Wow. Kind of okay. like spent <laughs> together for all their life. Yeah. And then uh, one of them uh, uh, fell ill and uh, had to move to assisted living facility. Mm -hmm. So this was the kind of like means that they were able to kind of like uh, keep on that uh, interaction that they've had oh, to be connected. For the, uh, yes, for the that they, to continue in the life. So we solved the customer's problem. The problem is that it's really difficult to send an invoice for solving the problem of aging, uh, problem of loneliness in age, aging population. So that's something that we were kind of like struggling to uh, find a, uh, find an entity who actually wants to pay for this. Uh, pay the bill for this service. So uh, um, in the end of the day, we uh, did a bit of a pivot with that one. Uh, started focusing on actually care services and how the video can be can be utilized in uh, home care yeah. and remote care. And uh, yeah, I guess that concept still lives lives uh, to date. The basically the uh, idea and the concept that we developed is basically now in use. Uh, with city of Helsinki, and I think they're logging twenty thousand video calls uh, a month currently with the uh, similar concept. Wow, that's great! But thank you so much for joining us, Mikkel. Thank you, Namrata. And it was great having you in our show. Thank you. Pleased to be here. So please stay tuned for more upcoming episodes for finish your business. Thank you.